Well, we want to welcome you to episode number three of our series, Jesus and the Kingdom. And, and so far in our series, we've been talking about the fact that Jesus came to usher in the kingdom of heaven. And we've been talking about how we, we need to develop a lens of looking at scripture of a king reigning over his kingdom. Now, that's a just one of the lenses that we can use to look at scripture as we talked about in previous episodes that we can talk about you know having a, a, a lens of love or a lens of grace or of mercy and when we look at the bible when we read the bible um, as we go with those lenses we see things um, in a little different perspective and so um, we've been talking about what's it look like for us to have a lens where we look at the Bible through that lens of a king's kingdom. We've talked about that the Bible is about, is a story about, a testimony about a king reigning over his kingdom, about a royal family, about a king raising up a royal family, sons and daughters who will co-reign with him, about a government, a framework of how um, a culture of his kingdom, how it works, um, a colonization project of how uh, a king expanding his kingdom and planting a colony. Um, and when we look at the Bible through the lens of a king ruling over his kingdom, we gain a deeper understanding, a deeper perspective of Scripture. In fact, I have people all the time who will say to me who've been um, through this series, they'll, they'll say, you know, Rob, Brian, we, after we began that series, whenever we opened the Bible, as we began to read the Gospels, as we looked at the New Testament, all of a sudden, we saw all this kingdom language, talking about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, things we never saw before. And that's what we're talking about. When we come with a lens of a king ruling over his kingdom, we begin to see additional things. Not, not the things we should, but the additional things that we need to see as we look at Scripture to fully understand who God is. But in this episode, I want to talk about, I want to move into this idea of what is God's ultimate plan? What's the king's ultimate plan? If we're talking about a king ruling over his kingdom, what does God ultimately want to do? And, and I want to suggest that God's ultimate plan is this, that God's desire is to fill the whole earth with his glory. In Isaiah chapter 6, we have Isaiah um, having a throne room encounter, um, and he sees the throne room. Uh, he sees the Lord sitting high and lofty on his throne. And in verse 1 of, of Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Man, as we, re we see that picture, so often we talk about that first part of what the angels declared. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We sing songs about holy, holy, holy. And how important that is that we have that image of God of seated on the throne. But I want you to notice the second part of their declaration, that the whole earth would be full of his glory. As Isaiah was getting a glimpse into the throne room, as we get a glimpse into the throne room, what we see is that the angels are flying around the throne of God, nonstop declaring, prophesying the desire of God's heart. And his desire is that the whole earth, the whole planet, would be filled with his glory. In Habakkuk chapter 2, the minor prophet, um, we see this verse. And a verse that is so important to me and has been instrumental in my life and ministry. Um, uh, one of my key signature verses is this. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Man, I love that verse because here's the prophet 
Habakkuk 600 years before Jesus coming and he's prophesying and to declare what's going to happen when Jesus comes. What's the heart of the Father? What God really wants to do? You say, well, Brian, what, what's that really mean? Well, let's break that down for a minute. It says that the earth, now that Hebrew word there is actually earths, and it means ground, it means lands, countryside, uh, nations and their lands. So it's talking about the physical planet. It's talking about this third rock from the sun, this place that God created, that the earth. Secondly, will be filled. Now, I want you to notice that's not has been or could be, will be filled as future tense, talking about what is going to happen that his, when the Messiah comes, when Jesus comes, will be filled, watch this now, with knowledge. Now, when most of us think about the word knowledge, we think about, you know, information, we think about learning things, we think about head knowledge, we think about being able to re remember things, and that's certainly a part of it. But the word here um, for knowledge is the word yada. And it doesn't mean to have a head knowledge. It means to have a, a, an experiential knowledge, to have an intimate, personal knowledge, to have an encounter type of knowledge. And in fact, that word yada is used in Genesis chapter 4. Um, where it says, now that the man, Adam, had relations, that word relations is actually the word yada, with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. That there is this intimacy, that the knowledge of this intimate knowledge of something, that the whole earth would be filled with an intimate knowledge of what? The glory of the Lord. Now, we use that word glory all the time, um, but what does that really mean? What does the word glory mean? Well, the actual Hebrew word is this, it's kabod. And kabod has this sense of something that is heavy, something that's weighty, and it is a, something that has, has a weight to it that is heavy enough to leave an imprint. Now, how many of you have ever um, decided you needed a nap, and so you lay down on the couch, or you lay down in the chair, and you got a pillow, and as you lay there and you take your nap, when you wake up, suddenly you discover that on the side of your face that you have this imprint of the pillow, or imprint of the, the upholstery on the on the couch. I can remember Grandma's couch had had a had a texture to it, and so when you laid on your head down, you would get an imprint. Why? Why are you imprinted? Because the weight of your head pressing against the pillow, against the fabric, created an imprint upon your face. And that's the idea when we think about kabod, when we think about the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is the weighty presence of God. It's the weighty, heavy presence of God, the presence that leaves an impact, that leaves an imprint that marks our lives. The whole earth would be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the weighty presence of God. Watch this now, as the water covers the sea. Now I find that interesting because when we think about how much of, the, of a sea is covered in water, well the obvious answer is all of it. That it's called the sea because it is covered in water. And the reality is that God wants to cover, He wants to immerse our lives. Everything in the sea is immersed in water. It is saturated in water. It finds its life, its breath, its absolute essence out of the water. And God wants to fill the entire earth with his glory. See, that's God's ultimate plan, that the entire earth would have an intimate encounter with his weighty presence, a presence that would leave an impact, an imprint, a mark, and that there would no longer be any part of the planet that would not be immersed in his glory be immersed in an intimate knowledge of His presence and His glory. That's an interesting thing, that everything upon the earth would be saturated in that. And so I, I look and say, I believe that God's ultimate plan is this, that, that the whole earth would be saturated with the culture or the ways or the life of heaven. Now, I want to encourage you as we think about that um, to take some time and we're going to, you know, whether that's by yourself or whether in the group you're sharing this with, that 
you would begin to answer a couple questions and, and really start some time to discuss and, and make it personal. And, and I want you to think about answering these questions. Number one, recall a time when you were impacted, when you were imprinted, when you were marked, saturated with the weighty presence of God. Maybe you were in a church service, or maybe you were in your car or at home or you know, with some friends, and you experienced that weighty presence, that you knew God was in the room. You knew that there was some that his presence was there, and it marked your life. I want you to think about an instance or two when that took place. And then the second question is this, how did that experience impact your life? How did it transform or change your life, your family, your church, the world around you? As you had that encounter, how did it change? Because I want you to think about if it changed you, if it had an impact on you, what would happen if suddenly that same type of encounter, that same type of impact, influence, that same kind of mark was not just on you, but it was on your neighbors, and it was on your neighborhood, and it was on your, your community and your town. God wants to fill the whole earth with the culture, with His glory, that we might have that type of experience. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you in the next episode. Amen.